here. Uh, these are the five areas of focus to really optimize your health, to make sure that you are getting the most out of yourself. Number one is nutrition. Think about this for a second. If you want to perform really, really well at whatever it is that you do, maybe it's being a dad, maybe it's being a, a business owner, uh, maybe it's being a busy mom uh, that also works, whatever that is, if you fuel your body with poor fuel, your engine's gonna run like crap. And the body is no different. We have to fuel our body. And one of the principles that I really wanna impart to you is an inflammatory diet Foods that are inflaming your body is leaving your brain sick and inflamed. And if we think about COVID-19, COVID-19 is actually an inflammatory virus. So if you already have high inflammation, you already have a fire burning pretty strong. Uh, and that takes energy away from other parts of your body, including your brain, which is uh, one of our main sources of performance. So how inflammation affects the body. Well, it affects many systems, not just the brain. It affects our, it affects, it affects our entire body. So uh, if we have a high level of inflammation going on, uh, we're going to see different symptoms, different problem areas pop up all over. And what's interesting, an anti-inflammatory diet and an anti-inflammatory lifestyle it actually is conducive to clearing up a lot of issues holistically or the whole body. So modern society, uh, the modern trends, this is why we've seen obesity almost at 40% uh, of the population because of the rise of processed, uh, industrialized, fast foods, things like that. Uh, whereas you see on the left side, uh, movement, proper sleep, uh, especially proper hydration and nutrition is conducive to slimming someone down and giving them the optimal body and also optimal performance. So what does a normal day look like? Cut straight to the chase. I recommend all my clients, this is almost a non-negotiable, uh, that you start your day with a smoothie. And the reason why, because it's full of nutrients, minerals, vitamins, antioxidants, polyphenols, all these good things we need to fuel our body. However, the other reason I like it is because it's already digested for you. So it takes no energy to break this down, which leaves you to tackle the day really, really strong. Uh, so it doesn't take energy away from digesting our food, which is estimated up to about 30% of our calories are burned just to digest what we're eating. Uh, so a smoothie works really, really great. Um, I like to incorporate a lot of vegetables in my smoothie as well as fruits. Uh, my ratio is usually like two to one or three to one vegetables to fruits. And then lunch may just be a, a simple vegetarian-ish type lunch. 60% uh, of my plate should be vegetables, uh, one to two cups worth roughly. A lunch big salad works really well, especially in the summertime. And then a simple protein, a light protein. We don't want a heavy protein at lunch because we don't want things to slow us down. Remember, cognitively and take away energy. This is why some heavier meals will leave you feeling like you want a nap in the afternoon. So fish, eggs, beans and rice, quinoa, oatmeal and peanut butter, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds on top of a salad. Uh, those, th those type of things work really, really well to keep your energy high, but also to add some more nutrients to your plate. This may take some creativity if you're a busy executive or you are a busy soccer mom or um, you know, you've just got a lot going on. This may take some planning. So um, you know, pre-making your meal before you go to work or the night before, um, that, that works really, really well in this situation or having a backup plan. Like you know, here locally, we have a place called Snack Lab or we have the ONF bar at Ozark Natural Foods. Maybe you have a place like Freshy, or maybe you have different places that serve uh, meals on the go that are super healthy and nutrient dense as well. So follow that up. You can bring an apple with you or a pear, or I like dates. Uh, these things are a really great uh, way to supplement in some more nutrients and also get a little bit of a treat at lunchtime. Dinner is more of our heavier meal. Uh, same thing, one to two cups worth of veggies, but now we're going to have a, maybe a heavier source like of protein like steak or a burger or poultry or fish. 
And then I like to add in a starchy vegetable at dinner. Um, so whereas lunch, maybe I only had, you know, cauliflower and broccoli at dinner. I like to add in along with my green beans or cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels. I like to add in a sweet potato or some squash uh, or even another piece of fruit uh, if it combines well with the food that you're eating. Uh, but these things work really well to promote uh, relaxation and sleep and restoration. So that's why I like to add in a starchy carb, like you see there in the picture, that butternut squash roasted, sweet potato fries. Man, it's absolutely delightful. This is a very nutrient dense day. Um, and really this, the smoothie makes things easy. It's, it's a no brainer. You wake up every day, you start your day with that smoothie. The lunch is something normally you're going to have planned. And then dinner is where you collaborate with your spouse or your significant other, or you just have that on your docket. Like I know what I'm doing for dinner. This is what I've got planned. Uh, also may have that, that backup plan when you're going out to eat, as you get practice, this will get easier and easier, but getting a nice big plate of veggies, a uh, nice big cut of protein. Uh, and that, that just works really, really well. Uh, from what I've seen and, and also is balanced. If you notice, this isn't dogmatic in one diet doctrine or another. Uh, this is a very balanced approach. I don't like teaching diets. I like teaching nutrition, which is nutrient dense food. So I've been doing this for about six years. It works really, really well. Um, and this is what I found, uh, you know, squashing the diet dogma, the keto, paleo, vegan, Ornish zone, all this other stuff and going with a balanced approach. Number two, man, this is huge. This is not being talked about enough is sleep. Uh, this is a brain on sleep deprived. Look at the Alzheimer's brain looks better than the, the brain that is sleep deprived. Long gone is the, uh, the message of, you know, I'll sleep when I die or like wearing it a badge of honor that I only get three or four hours of sleep a night because I'm a busy executive or whatever. We have to prioritize our sleep. It is our cognitive function. If you want to be a next level performer, you want to optimize your health, sleep reduces inflammation. And remember, it's that inflammation that we talked about at the beginning that slows down the functions of the body, slows down the immune system, but also slows down the brain. Now, what are some of my tips? I'm going to make this easy. I have a whole hour long presentation on sleep. Uh, but this I'm going to shorten, I'm going to give you my quick tips, get early morning sunshine. And this is actually fits into a workout routine of getting outside, doing a little jog, maybe doing some body weight exercises, get sunshine early in the morning It's actually been shown to raise your serotonin and help you to sleep better at night because serotonin converts into melatonin at the end of the day, shoot for 150 milligrams or less of caffeine and consume it before noon, cut off all caffeine after 12 o'clock. This is huge. If you limit your caffeine consumption, cut out the energy drinks, all that other stuff, I promise you, you will sleep better. And the reason why is because caffeine has a half-life of eight hours, eight to 10 hours. What is a half-life? Well, that means if I have 150 milligrams of caffeine at noon, eight hours later at 8 p.m., I have 75 milligrams of caffeine still circulating in my system. That means that it's cut in half every eight, eight hours. That means you're going through your sleep cycles at night still with caffeine in your system, which is stimulating the adrenal glands to reduce or produce cortisol and adrenaline, which jacks up your sleep. Number three, nutrient dense foods. Yes, we talked about that. Stop eating before 7 p.m. or roughly two to three hours before you go to bed. This going to bed with an empty stomach actually will improve your sleep quality, not quantities, quality. So the amount of deep sleep you get, the amount of REM sleep you get, and your overall sleep quality will shoot through the roof if you go to bed without food actually in your stomach. That is a game changer, trust me. And I've seen people lose tons of weight just by doing this, stopping eating three hours before bed, get rid of that nine o'clock, 10 o'clock bedtime snack. Um, and I promise you, you will see what I'm talking about when you do this. Avoid alcohol regularly. Number four, avoiding alcohol regularly uh, improves our sleep quality. Yes, but it lowers inflammation. There's a reason why you're in called intoxicated when you drink alcohol. And the reason why is because it actually is toxic to the body in large doses. Um, and so limiting that to one or two times per week, one or two drinks per night, 
is really, really beneficial to improve your sleep quality, your sleep quality. Number five and number six, stop screen time before you go to bed, limit household light exposure. So basically get off all your devices, dim the house lights. Uh, you can also wear blue blocking glasses that block out blue light that suppress melatonin. And then number six, magnesium glycinate or magnesium malate or citrate before bed. Everybody is magnesium deficient. It's estimated that 90% of the population is magnesium deficient. So supplementing magnesium can really calm you down. It gets rid of leg cramps, uh, any possible restless leg syndrome at night, things like that. Magnesium can really, really help. Number three, this is huge. You got to reduce stress. If you are an active, busy person, which everyone is nowadays, cortisol is released uh, with both acutely and chronically in high stress situations. Cor we need cortisol to get us up out of bed and get us moving. However, excess cortisol or unbalanced cortisol, it causes weight gain. Uh, it can cause weight loss and really stress out people. Uh, but that's mostly muscle loss, not fat loss. Uh, it raises inflammation. Remember, we're talking about inflammation again. It lowers the immune function, which we all need good immune function right now. And then it also... Uh, causes muscle loss and low libido. So having a stress reducing routine, what is that? Well, for everybody, this may be different. For me, I like biking and hiking and floating. Uh, I'm just getting into woodworking and really, really enjoying that. Uh, however, for you, it may be the guitar. It may be taking a bath with some candles. It may be taking your dog on a walk in nature, playing with your kids, Whatever that is for you, you have to figure that out. What reduces your stress? Try to prioritize this into every single day. You are doing something, something to reduce your stress, which brings me to my next point, movement. A huge stress redu reducer is actually moving and exercising our bodies. From men's health, look at the benefits of exercise, increases production of, of neurotransmitters, uh, improves memory, lengthens attention span. How, how critical is attention span nowadays, especially all of you who are working on Zoom or having meetings, things like that. Uh, it boosts our decision-making skills. It prompts growth of new nerve cells and blood vessels. Uh, it, and it also improves multitasking and planning. So exercise is more important than just for our body. It's massively important for our brain as well. Increase the levels of all these things with exercise. BDNF, this is like the brain's uh, fertilizer or miracle grow. I mean, it just grows new brain cells. Brain-derived neurotropic factor is what that stands for. Serotonin, which is our mood regulation. Norepinephrine and dopamine, which is for our get up and go. And then look what it does. Is it reduces levels of those stress hormones that we talked about, cortisol and adrenaline, which keep us stressed out and keep us on edge. Now, uh, you know, I created a simple at home, 10 minute body weight workout. Let's say you're, you're strapped for time. You got meetings all day. Your calendar is booked. Uh, how are you going to get some movement in, man? This is simple. Throw this together in your living room, 10 minutes from start to finish. You know what else this does is it circulates blood. Blood is the source of life. Uh, the Bible calls blood sacred because it's the source of life. And as we move our body, what are we doing? We're circulating our blood at a faster rate. So not only does this make you more awake and more alert first thing in the morning, but it also sends nutrients and oxygen all over the body to these different tissues, different organs, and really gets us moving from this stagnant night where we laid in bed uh, and didn't move. It gets our lymphatic system moving, so we detox. I cannot go over the importance of moving your body on a daily basis and how this will actually improve your performance at work. It'll improve your business. It'll improve you being a dad. It'll improve you in all areas. So don't underestimate this. There's a simple YouTube video I made. It's 10 minutes start to finish. It shows you everything you can do in your living room. Just follow it. All you need is a rubber band. Uh, so check that video out. And I'll try to have that in the link to the description of this as well. Um, number five, data tracking. And this is where you may be like, what? I cannot emphasize. This is, this is becoming a non-negotiable in my coaching practice. 
uh, wearables and fitness track trackers have a huge ROI. They have a, a massive benefit on giving you feedback of aspects of your life that keep you on track. For instance, uh, they help provide you know, data on what happens to you when you have a drink at nine o'clock. You can see the nights that you sleep and how your HRV, your heart rate, your respiration, everything, how it is on the nights that you have a drink at nine versus not having a drink at nine. Uh, this can really keep you accountable because then you know, oh man, my scores, my sleep, everything suffers, my inflammation rises and I can see it. I have quantifiable data in front of me to see it. Um, and, and that motivates me to not have that drink or that slice of cheesecake at nine o'clock because I can, I know, and this is the other thing over time, you'll start to feel it too. You'll see the higher my scores are and the more on point I am that day. And that is motivation to not make that mistake. Again, it keeps you on track. There's multiple, uh, products. This first one I showed you was the aura ring. Uh, the aura ring is this is per currently what I use. And it gives you the most accurate data that I've found, especially when it comes to heart rate and HRV, which is heart rate variability. This is the, basically the level of the stress, the amount of stress you have in your heartbeat rhythm. So we can actually determine your levels of stress by what your heart rate is doing. It also gives you your respiration rate, your body temperature. It'll tell you if you're, you have an onset of cold or illness coming based on that body temperature. Really, really valuable. For two or 300 bucks, man, this thing is a huge return for your investment. Uh, there's also the, the Garmin. This is what my wife uses. Uh, really, really good. It still tracks your deep sleep, your REM sleep, your HRV, your heart rate, your stress, all those things, and gives you a readiness score just like the Aura Ring does. There's also the Fitbit. I haven't played with this one, uh, but I've heard good things about it. Uh, so there's, there's different, you know, there's different wearables you can get. The whoop strap is one of my other clients really likes the whoop strap. Um, but like, here's an example. Um, this is the effect on caffeine. So I decided to do a test with my aura ring. This is me on caffeine. Okay. Um, this is after a 12 ounce regular dark roast or light roast coffee. And then watch what happens whenever I switch to decaf for two days my deep sleep increases dramatically and my amount of wakefulness in the night, these are the, these light blue are the amounts that I woke up during the night uh, and maybe turned over. So dramatic improvement in my overall sleep quality based on, um, you know, just reducing some caffeine and decaf isn't caffeine free. And sometimes I'll do half calf or I'll do a, a little bit of coffee, regular coffee and a little bit of decaf. Here's another example. This is uh, a night of inflammatory foods, like eating out. Look at my sleep quality over here to the very, very left. And then look at my resting heart rate was a 43. Uh, my heart rate variability was bad at a 68. My respiratory rate, this is 15 breaths per minute. And then my body temperature was elevated. Now look over here to the right. You see that my deep sleep was an hour and 49 minutes compared to 31 minutes, okay? Um, my resting heart rate was lower. My heart rate variability, my stress went up almost 30, actually over 30 points. My respiratory rate dropped down to a 14.6. This is a less stressed out person. And I get that score to show me at a 91 readiness compared to a 70 over here, which is telling me to pay attention. This is all just the difference between inflammatory foods, maybe eating out and being dialed in and sticking to what you know works really, really well for you. So I cannot emphasize this enough. Huge return for your investment on data tracking. This is eating too close to bed. Okay, check this out. Eating too close to bed, 31 minutes of deep sleep over here. Uh, my heart rate was started and it actually started way up here in the 50s and 60s at the beginning of the night, only dropped to a 46 on a minimum. Whereas this night over here, I got an hour and 49 minutes of deep sleep and my heart rate started and averaged at a 46 and actually went as low as a 40. Um, so massive difference on just, this was even eating clean, but it was just eating too close to bed. So there, then we go back to that point again about eating two or three hours at least, try to shoot for three or four, but two or three hours um, before bed. 
huge game changer that I can impart to you right there. So that's my five tips for optimizing your health, getting started on this road to get the most from yourself. I do offer one-on-one coaching. Uh, we go over a health coaching questionnaire. We go over any symptoms that you may be having. We, we fit a protocol and a meal plan and a lifestyle to you and the, the circumstances that you have. I also teach classes here locally in the Northwest Arkansas area and online on Zoom. Uh, so I do virtual classes. I do group classes, corporate lunch and learn seminars. I've taught at the University of Arkansas sororities. I teach locally at Natural Grocers. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, comment below or hit the, um, you know, you can email me. Uh, but if you learned something from this, you enjoyed this, hit the like button, share this with somebody uh, in your life that could use it. Maybe get a boost, maybe get back on track. We've all been down and out this last year of uh, Pandemicville. So uh, hopefully this helps somebody out there. Again, my name is Zach, MusclesAndVeggies.com. You can email me, MusclesAndVeggies at Gmail. Have a good day. This video is brought to you by my partnership with Thorn.com. This is actually the smoothie that I use in my shakes every single day. I have my clients use this. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, polyphenols, herbs, and it basically takes the place of a, a multivitamin. As long as you have a smoothie a day, you don't have to worry about buying a multivitamin because this has everything in it. All of my listeners, my clients, if you email me at musclesandveggies.com, tell me you want the 25% off for life discount. You get 25% off for life of all thorn.com products. So what a steal. Shoot me an email. I'll get you on the list.